This week I sit down with Cameron Monaghan to talk about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and how his real life skills inspired Cal Kestis. Plus Matt Leaves back. This is the Star Wars Show. From the Lucasfilm headquarters in San Francisco, here's your hosts, Andy and Anthony. Hello and welcome to the Star Wars Show, the only Star Wars show on the internet that strapped a game wheel to the back of a trailer and drove it around Hollywood Boulevard for fun. That's actually pretty tame on the Star Wars Show scale of crazy. That's true, we did blow up a sail barge last week. Tune in next week to see us blow up the wheel, but for now, let's go to the news. A brand new image and trailer from The Mandalorian were released on VanityFair.com on Monday. In the image, we get a closer look at Ming-Na Wen's brand new character, Fennec Shand, who will cross paths with The Mandalorian midway through season one. But if an image isn't enough for you, she was also featured in a brand new teaser trailer that was filled with The Mandalorian on a do-back, scout troopers on speeder bikes, IG-11 making it rain blaster bolts, and that Nick Nolte goodness you've been craving. The Mandalorian will be streaming on Disney Plus starting November 12th. To watch the trailer on repeat and read an interview with Ming-Na Wen, head to VanityFair.com. Target Vader number five, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order number four, and Star Wars number 74 might be hitting store shelves next Wednesday, but we have an exclusive look at them right now. Target Vader number five shows everybody's favorite toilet paper wearing bounty hunter Dengar making that bread after completing a deal with Darth Vader, which results in fellow mercenary Valance ending up in a pretty uncomfortable situation. In Jedi Fallen Order number four, the second sister is on Ontotho searching a dilapidated temple that has seen better days. Last but not least, we have the penultimate issue of Star Wars number 74, which finds Captain Solo finally admitting one of his plans is stupid, as well as mangler-mounted stormtroopers and Darth Vader proving he doesn't need backup. You can take a closer look at these pages and more right now by heading to StarWars.com and pick them up when they hit store shelves on November 13th. Have you ever dreamed of going head-to-head -head against Darth Vader? Well, your dreams are about to come true thanks to the third and final installment of ILM X-Lab's virtual reality experience, Vader Immortal. Building on the events of episode two, it is up to you to stop Vader before he destroys all life on Mustafar. Plus, you'll discover more about the mystery of your bloodline. Episode three will be available on Oculus Quest and Oculus Rift starting November 21st. But you can head to StarWars.com right now to find out more about this cinematic conclusion in an interview with director Ben Snow and producer Alyssa Finley. And for more news from around the galaxy, check out StarWars.com. And finally, people have been misquoting Star Wars for years. Mostly in my Twitter mentions. So we decided to send Matt Lieb to Hollywood Boulevard to find out how well people know Star Wars in the following segment presented by Geico. Hey everyone, Matt Lieb here. I've been driving around Hollywood Boulevard in this beautifully decorated mobile game show truck playing the game Who Talks First. How does it work, you ask? People are going to come up and spin the wheel. It's going to land on a Star Wars character. I will read them a quote. And if they believe they actually said the quote, they'll say believe it. If they don't believe it, they say unbelievable. And that's how it works. Are you guys ready to play Who Talks First? Who wants to play Who Talks First? It's a Star Wars themed game show where you get to spin a wheel. It's a lot of fun and it's gonna be on the internet. Come on up. You excited? I'm so excited. Are you really excited? Yeah, yeah we're gonna be on the internet. All right. You got Jin. Did Jin say this? Rebellions are built on hope. Cool. Unbelievable. That is incorrect. She did say that. Rebellions are built on hope. Give that wheel a spin. Ah, oh, Kylo Ren, played by Adam Driver. He made this look okay. I will finish what you started. I believe it. You believe it? Believe it. That is correct. I will finish what you started. You got it right. You guys won. Ladies and gentlemen, who wants to play Who Talks First? The internet's best game show. Come on, you'll love it. Hey, you want to play an internet game show? All right, yeah. Are you ready to play Who Talks First? Sure. Let's do it. Go ahead and spin that wheel. Oh, Darth that's Vader. Oh, that's easy. All right. Luke, I am your father. Believe it. Unbelievable. The real quote is, no, I am your father. No. I am the father. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're tricky here. Trick question. We're tricky okay. here, dude. I'll make a deal. If you play this game, I will stop using this bullhorn in your face right now. All right, let's do it. Let's spin that wheel. Yoda! All right, that is why you fail. Believe it or unbelievable? Unbelievable. Believe it, he actually said it. That is why you fail. 
Why sit around in traffic when you can play a Star Wars themed game? What's your name? Mark Nobel. As in like Nobel Peace Prize. Right. All right, let's do this. Go ahead and spin that wheel. That is a nice spin, Nobel. You just oh, won yeah. the Nobel spinning prize. Oh, oh, oh! That is Finn. Escape. He's won against an army. We have to help him. We have to fight. Believe it. That is correct. Escape. He's one man against an army. We have to help him. We have to no. fight him. You oh. won! Oh. Who talks first? You did it! <laughs> that's real good. Well, that's it for our game of Who Talks First. We learned a lot about different Star Wars quotes. Where we're going, we don't need roads. We. Excited to be sitting down now with Cameron Monaghan. Welcome, hey, hey. sir. What's up? You are Cal Kestis in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which is coming out very soon. How's it feel to be getting so close? It's so exciting. The game looks amazing. I've been kind of addicted to playing it, and I want to play more. <laughs> I kind of want to be playing it right now. Yeah, same. So tell us a little bit about Cal Kestis. What is he like? He's been on the run for a while now. He grew up within the Jedi Republic, but his master was killed during the Order 66 purge. So he's been in hiding on this kind of scrap planet called Bracca. And from there he becomes discovered and kind of gets thrown into this adventure. And he's good hearted, but he has a bit of an emotional wall up. And he also has a very volatile relationship to being a Jedi and to the force itself. So it's something that he has to kind of work through. And he also has to work through his relationships. And that's what a lot of the game is about, is about him dealing with his past and moving forward and trying to put his experience to a very positive or good use. How would you compare Cal to other Jedi we knew? Is he kind of closest to anyone in personality or? He's kind of his own guy because so much of the game is about Cal's internal struggle. So I really wanted to build him from the inside out. And I wanted to let the situations and circumstances that he exists with and define who he is as a person. I wanted to make sure that his past traumas and losses and everything kind of set up who he was, but also with an incredible empathy and kindness. I think that there's something really amazing about Cal's optimism or desire for goodness because he's gone through so much. It was less about trying to liken him or distinguish him from other performances. I think that there are similarities to some, but he feels different in yeah. a lot of ways. He kind of feels like his own guy, which I'm excited about. Was this the first time that you had done like a full video game performance capture? It was. What was that like? It was different, but the same in a lot of ways. The basic concepts are there, but they're implemented in such a different way. You're in an empty warehouse, so you have to use a lot of imagination, but at the same time, that kind of frees you in so many ways. You're not constrained by any sort of physical set or placement of camera or anything. That's going to be decided later. So you instead kind of just learn how to express within the context and situations of the character and just really allow your imagination to blossom. And hopefully that can then later inform a lot of what they're going to do with the scene. And from the stuff I've seen, it really has turned out really well. So I'm excited. Obviously, part of a performance like this is very physical too. Absolutely. You actually had had some martial arts training beforehand, right? I did, yeah. I grew up doing a lot of different martial arts. So I was able to kind of tie that into the character of Cal a little bit. I had a lot of experience with weapons, specifically in a style called XMA, which is like a very performance-based, flourishy, expressive version of martial arts and weapons training. So when I was in the audition for it, they threw a lightsaber at me and were like, what can you do with this? Can you just just show us like how you move with it. And I kind of like reached into the deep, dark crevices of my brain, you know, opened up an old rusty chest that yeah. had some of the flourishes and swings that I remembered from being trained when I was younger and managed to kind of pull something out. And I think that helped in getting the part. That's, so I'm glad. <laughs> that's gotta be so fun. Like when they when they talk to you, they're kind of expecting, you know, we've, we've all played around with a sure. lightsaber before and then they throw it to you and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah I know what I'm doing. Like yeah. I got this. <laughs> well, it was, also, it was also funny too, because at that point I didn't know that I was auditioning for a Star Wars game, but I kind of knew. Right. I'll be totally honest. They made these like fake audition pages and stuff. And I was kind of reading it like, hmm, this is Star Wars, isn't it? <laughs> and they were like, no, no. Like everyone's like, no, of course not. It was codenamed something completely different. So when I got into the room and then when they gave me the toy lightsaber, I was just like, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> Cameron, is there anything that you would like people to know about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? Anything about your experience with it? Anything you hope they get out of it? Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm just excited for people to really see the extent of where the story 
story goes and how it shifts and a lot of the different tones and colors of the game and the story within it. It's a really incredible journey. It really goes places and I can't wait for people to see it exactly where it goes. It's amazing. Well, I am very excited to play it. I'm sure everybody else out there is too. November 15th, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Thank you so much, Thank Cameron. you very much. You're watching the Star Wars show. How often do you think Cameron plays Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? It sounds like a lot, and I don't know if I could do that if I was him, because it's got to be weird to be Cameron controlling Cal Kestis, who's basically a little mini Cameron responding yeah. to big Cameron's commands. Yeah, it's weird. It's like Calception. That's some next level thinking, Carboni. It's the only thinking I do. All right, well, let's end the episode now. As always, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you. Janina probably had the same issue too with Aiden and Sam with like everything. Sam's fine with it. Sam wants to control a hundred mini Sams.